Hey everyone, in this demo I'll show you how to set up Metabase Cloud with a MongoDB Atlas cluster and build a dashboard of MongoDB data. First, I'll go to MongoDB Atlas and create a new cluster. For this demo, I'm going to use a free M0 cluster and I'll preload the sample data. That's what I'm going to visualize in my database. I'll keep the rest of the configuration as is. It takes a few minutes to set up the cluster, so in the meantime, I'll go set up my metabase. On the metabase website, I'll just go to Get Started, which directs me to Metabase Cloud sign up, and I'll need to create a Metabase Cloud account. I'm going to pick a starter plan, but whatever I pick will be free for 14 days, and uh, I can change the plan later. The alias um, is the URL of my metabase, and the region is where it's hosted. I'll keep it as is for now, and again, I can change it later. I'll need to get in my billing info, which I'm going to cut out of this video, and then wait for my metabase to set up. While it's being set up, let me configure my MongoDB. My Atlas cluster is ready, and if I browse collections, I see the sample MFlex database that uh, I preloaded during setup. For Metabase to be able to connect to this database, I need to configure the network access for the cluster. In Metabase Docs, there is a list of IP addresses that Metabase Cloud uses, and you'll need to add them to the Atlas Allow list. For this short demo, I'll just add all IPs. Okay, my cluster is ready to receive connections, so let me check back on my Metabase Cloud instance. It's been set up, and I just need to create an account for this specific instance. And let me skip adding data for now. I'll do it later. All right, so I'm in my new Cloud Metabase, and it's not connected to anything yet. Metabase comes with its own sample data, which you can explore, but let me connect to my MongoDB. Go to Add Your Own Data and select MongoDB. I need to give Metabase the connection info. I can input these parameters or use a connection string. And for MongoDB Atlas, I'll use the connection string. So I'll go back to Atlas and click Connect. Select Drivers, scroll down to Connection String, and Copy. I switch to Metabase, paste the Connection String. Uh, put my password. Um, if I click Connect right now, Metabase will tell me that it needs a database to connect to. Um, the Connection String provided by Atlas is for the whole cluster. Um, so I need to add the database name. I have the sample MFlex database, so I'll put the name of that database into the string. And done! Now that I connected Metabase to my MongoDB, I'll take a look at what's in it. In Browse Databases, here is my Mongo, and let me take a look at the Movies collection. Metabase represented the documents in table form, rows and columns, and the way Metabase decides on what those columns are is by sampling a large number of documents from the collection and inferring the common schema. And see how Metabase represents some of these fields, like genres is an array, or let's say awards or IMDB data uh, represented as a JSON. And I can use the view details button to see the entire document. And uh, I can start exploring data right here for a basic field like type. I can, for example, click on the column header and filter or get a distribution of values in the column. There are movies and series in this data set. If I want to do something more complicated, like exploring that JSON data, I can use the Metabase Graphical Query Builder. So let's say I wanted to see how the average IMDb ranking changes over time. Are movies becoming better or worse? To answer this question, I go to New Question and pick Movies as the data that I want to query. In this graphical query interface, I can add filters and summaries. I want to look at average IMDb rating by year, so in summary, I'm going to pick Average and IMDb rating. Now, let's go back to a table for a bit. 
IMDb is a JSON field, but Metabase can parse the individual subfields and give them to you as options for your query. I want to group by release date, so I pick released and just switch it to year. Metabase will automatically extract the part of the date that I'm interested in. I click uh, visualize and Metabase will create a chart for me. Let me make it a bit easier to read. In settings display, I'll turn on the trend line to see the general direction. And I'll also change the range of the y-axis, say from 5 to 8. So we see a general downward trend. Maybe movies are getting worse, maybe we are rating them more harshly. And this chart is interactive. I can click on a data point and see the movies that were released that year, or I can zoom in on a time period. Uh, let me save this chart so I can use it later. So I don't need to write Mongo queries to create charts, but Metabase does translate everything that I make into native queries. If I go back to the Query Builder and sh click Show Query button, I see the native query, or I can even convert the question into the native query. And, and of course, I can write my own native queries as well. Going back to my data over here, I see this Genres field, and let's say I wanted to find average movie runtime by genre. Genre is an array, so to work with it, I'll need to unwind it. And for that, I'll need to write a native query. So let me go to new native query and I'll start unwind genres, then add the grouping and uh, let me add a projection and run the query. I have the same visualization options with native queries. So let me make this one a bar chart. The only difference is that charts built with native queries instead of the query builder will not be interactive. Let me save this chart too. Once I created a bunch of charts, I can create a dashboard to display them together. So I go to new dashboard, let's call it movies dashboard, and uh, add the charts that I just created. This is just the beginning. You can add more charts or even text or links to your dashboard, create dashboard filters, share what you built with others, or even embed in your own application. Try it out yourself.